Hello and welcome to the Candlelight Podcast where I, Mohamed Abdullah, talk about different topics including some of my favorites which are movies, martial arts and philosophy as you guys know. Let's start with this week's quote guys and today we have a quote that is a bit extensive. We have a part of it which is the actual quote and then the rest of it which is an explanation and an elaboration of the quote. Let's read it out. It's from Steve Jobs himself. One second, let me pull out the quote from uh, businessinsider.com. There it is. I hope the mic is not too far that uh, you, you guys can barely hear my voice. Let me just pull it a bit closer. There we go. So, the quote goes as follows. There is a tremendous amount of craftsmanship in between a great idea and a great product. That's the quote. And as you evolve that great idea, it changes and grows. It never comes out like it starts because you learn a lot more as you get into the subtleties of it. And you also find there are tremendous trade-offs that you have to make. There are just certain things you can't make electrons do. There are certain things you can't make plastic do, or glass do, or factories do, or robots do. Designing a product is keeping 5,000 things in your brain and fitting them all together in new and different ways to get what you want. And every day you discover something new that is a new problem or a new opportunity to fit these things together a little differently. This is why almost all successful startups have founders who understand business, design, and technology. Product development is the process of navigating a maze. Not three separate mazes, but a single maze that contains all these functions. These, the people navigating the maze need the authority to determine the path of the mm-hmm. company. So, there you go, guys. A lot's been said. Uh, kind of, you know, kind of uh, touching on different things. Uh, Kind of different topics altogether, uh, such as you know leadership and uh, the process of designing and creating, crafting. So this is the quote. Let me repeat. There's just a tremendous amount of craftsmanship in, in between a great idea and a great product. And as a design student myself, I kind I understand this because I've seen, you know, I've seen the process myself as I've been, you know, delving into it for the past four years. You know, design creating a design thinking of a design and putting it on paper and then trying to apply it in real life, trying to create a model of it, whether it's, you know, by building it through, you know, with wood or building it with cardboard or building it with, you know, um, for example, 3D modeling or anything like that, or even making a video and trying to create a storyboard and then actually take shots that you have planned on the storyboard. It's all, you know, it's all part of, it's all the same thing. You are you know, putting down a good an idea and you want to create a product based on that idea. And the pro- product is never uh, exactly like the idea because you have to, you know, take care of many different things in the process of creation. It's interesting, you know, it's, uh, you know, the reason I guess uh, that I chose this quote is because it just highlights the intricacy of having to, you know, of having an idea and applying it and just, you know, having a plan and trying to uh, implement it. This is a really interesting thing for me because that's my field kind of, my a design field. Um, I'm focused more on obviously videography and um, audio and editing, but that's, and also that has its own, you know, share in this kind of, in this idea. But, you know, it's really just, you know, how can I say cross fields? It's, it's not relegated to one specific field. It's everything. You plan, you execute. And the execution is not exactly like the plan. It barely ever is exactly the same. But that's something that's interesting and it's really uh, well articulated here by uh, Steve Jobs himself. Uh, so pretty interesting. Oh, by the way, he said this in, back in 1995. Pretty cool thing that he mentioned and uh, exp- expound- expounded upon. So with that said, guys, Oh, uh, we actually just uh, came upon the day of Ashura. Uh, us uh, Muslims uh, just came upon the day of Ashura, which is uh, the you know tenth uh, day of the Islamic month of Muharram. It is uh, the day that Musa, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, or Moses, um, saved the Muslims at the time from the wrath of Pharaoh by you know crossing the Red Sea. Uh, guys, the Prince of Egypt uh, actually the movie Prince of Egypt captured this moment, this moment you know moment in history's majesty very beautifully just you know the beautiful moment where he but you know 
where God separates the sea and the people go are amazed by this feat and they this miracle and they walk through it and the you know the possible uh, the scenery that is that they can see for themselves you know having the sea uh, split in half just you know how the the fish and the ocean's creatures are you know uh, just swimming by as they're seeing it as they're walking between two cliffs of uh, water of sea sea water so a beautiful moment in history and uh, a great moment in history actually uh, the muslims were saved that day and uh, arrogance and hubris were destroyed utterly destroyed that day the pharaoh died by drowning uh he thought himself himself as some sort of god you know in fact as a matter of fact egypt had many gods and he thought he was the highest of them and he even had the you know kind of like the audacity the audacity to actually plan on building a tower in order to you know go up to the sky and actually be able to talk to the god of moses uh you know people people are you know people tend to get that arrogant and you know the greatest example of that is obviously um the the uh, most you know the biggest example of that rather not necessarily the greatest because the greatest would entail that it's great um the biggest example of that is pharaoh so this moment in time really showcased the power you know of the creator and how just having faith that the creator has your back you will be able to accomplish anything because keep in mind the uh, the Muslims at the time, with uh, Musa, peace be upon him, they were stuck in between a rock and a hard place, so to say. In front of them was the Red Sea that they cannot cross in any imaginable way, and behind them was the army of Pharaoh coming in on them, trying to slaughter them. And yet, they had, you know, Mo Moses had faith, peace be upon him. Musa Ali Sam had faith that they'll be able to escape, and he trusted in God. And God commanded him to strike the stick onto the ground. And the entire sea was split open. SubhanAllah. Just shows you. It goes to show what a beautiful uh, moment in history that we got to celebrate um, by fasting. We fast the day of Ashura. Um, and uh, yeah, we fasted. We then, uh, you know, enjoyed our breaking of that fast. And I was actually really tired. I, I went to sleep right before sunset, uh, got an hour of sleep because I was just so hungry. And then I woke up, uh, I was w awoken by my mother to, you know, to a bowl of soup. Uh, not, not, not a bowl of soup, actually. First of all, you break your fast with like three dates. And then with some water and three dates, that's kind of like the way you do it. It's a great way to do it. And then you wait for a while and then you start eating. Because you don't want to eat right away after fasting for a whole day. Because if you fast for a whole day, then eat right away. It's, you know, your body's like, dude, dude, where's this sudden food coming from? And you can't just eat a whole, a full meal and you're uh, without your body, you know, crashing and be like, dude, we, we weren't, we're not used to this. We're not warmed up for this. We've been, you know, um, calm for, we had nothing coming by here for the past, you know, 15 hours or so. And want and you know, all of a sudden you want to eat, dude, take it easy. So what you do is get three dates, eat, eat them, drink some water, and then waiting for, you know, at least uh, for me, this is what I do, 30 minutes, and then I actually have a good meal. So yeah, that's what I did, and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, may Allah accept uh, our fasts and our prayers and our uh, obedience. So, uh, oh, something cool I did this week actually was, uh, I visited for the first time uh, the natural reserve here we have here in Sharjah. Uh, it was there for a while. It was actually, it's been there for like 14 years, and I haven't, you know, I didn't know much about it, and uh, I didn't even know about it at all, basically, uh, pretty much. And uh, I was actually doing a kind of like a little project for my internship, and uh, we had to make a video about the place, and we had to, you know, gather some for information, gather gather some photos and videos, and then make a compilation and montage of a video, uh, montaging all the th uh, things we have gathered gathered together, and uh, you know, kind of ex uh, present this place to uh, people who are, you know, watching for the rest of our uh, internship, um, uh, the rest of the people in our internship, because, you know, we were split into teams of, you know, this team, or I guess sections. Uh, this section is gonna be focusing on 
the uh, you know media stuff and this section is going to be focusing on that stuff so i'd like to say you know i did a good job i hope i did a good job and uh, it was pretty cool um if you guys want i'll actually i can actually upload anyway i can't upload the video because it's kind of like a property of the media bureau so but i can upload you know some pictures and stuff uh uh and you know the community side of it side of things where you can see like how cool how cool the place is it's really beautiful um i can actually upload up, upload the uh, videos without my videos because i went there myself i took the videos myself and the pictures so you I, you guys can check that out and uh, without necessarily the the voiceover that we did uh, so it's pretty cool it was a pretty cool place um i'm glad to see we have something oh i didn't even explain what the place is uh, you know, it's, you know, uh, it's a breeding ground, basically, for different species of animals, most of which are birds, uh, beautiful kinds of different animals and birds and, you know, just in their habitat, uh, where you can see, like, and learn about all these different kinds of uh, species. So it was pretty cool, uh, interesting place to visit. And I'm really happy that we, we at Sharjah, you know, my city, that did something like this, something that's, you know, beneficial to nature, something that, you know, is a reserve it conserves uh you know animal species that would otherwise die out or become extinct pretty cool stuff so i'm i'm glad to have that here just uh i know the reason for why my uh, i love my city it's just awesome all around i love i love being here and uh thinking about um, i'm thinking about of actually starting an instagram page for the podcast so something i've been thinking about for a while i haven't really done but i'm thinking of actually um starting an Instagram page for the podcast where I can actually attract more viewers through the Instagram page because a lot of, you know, uh, people who get successful in the UAE um, get there because, you know, uh, their stuff spreads on Instagram because Instagram is a, uh, we as Emiratis, uh, this country in as a whole, we're very invested in Instagram. So if you want to get something going, you got to start with Instagram. It's a, it's a great idea. I did mine on YouTube because I didn't really want to, and I never promoted this podcast, by the way. Uh, I think I've told you guys this. No one knows the name of this podcast from my person, you know, uh, people that I know. No one knows the name of the podcast except for like two people because, you know, I don't want I don't want this to spread and people spread it and I get a huge following right away because I want to, you know, my podcast was very, uh, uh, as you guys can hear, maybe something kind of fell outside. I think a piece of metal uh, outside my room. But anyway, I don't want to um, get fit get famous i was about to say get famous no i don't want the podcast to spread and grow uh like a number too quick because i wanted to you know or uh, you know uh kind of like refine my podcast make it as as good as it can be before you know the public's eye catches on i wanted to you know because it's still up i'm pretty sure it's still a bit rough around the edges and i just need to you know do some more work on the podcast as a whole uh in terms of you know the webs uh, not website youtube itself i actually uploaded uh, something uh, kind of new today i uploaded a banner there was never a banner in my website in my uh, youtube channel and and i uploaded one for example these kind of things i really want to you know have more to bring to the table uh, with regard to the podcast and more knowledge even like, so that i when i speak i don't i'm not just saying you know random nonsense that i've you know just thought of at the moment and just go blathering about no i really want to make this something of substance you know something that people can benefit from so i really want my podcast to do well to grow well and to be beneficial to everybody that listens to it and hopefully enjoyable as well um but the most important thing i guess it's uh, you know the mel, Gib mel gibson's three e's i mentioned this before the three e's that mel gibson talks about in filmmaking um entertain it wait no entertain most basic one Educate, another a step above that, and elevate that. When you reach those three E's, uh, with regard to how your content comes across, you have made it. Because you know people are not only entertained, they're not only educated. It's something they didn't know about. They're also elevated spiritually. Their morale is raised. That's something that I want to do. It's inspiring and it's impactful. I hope that's what people would say when they listen to my podcast. And uh, that's why I didn't want it to, you know, get you know, fly off the charts right off, right off the bat. So that's why I don't promote it, but I'm thinking of starting an Instagram soon, hopefully. We'll see what happens in the, in the words of Dana White. We'll see what happens. 
So um, yeah, that's actually what I'm thinking about doing. But what I am planning for sure on doing, inshallah, God willing, is actually getting LASIK eye surgery for my eyes. So uh, LASIK eye surgery for my eyes, kind of redundant. So I'm looking for the best places here in the UAE to do it. And uh, I've called a bunch of friends. I've talked to a bunch of relatives uh, just to see, you know, um, which is the best place for the best price to do. And I've gotten uh, pretty good uh, recommendations. And I'm hopefully, hopefully going to try to book an appointment as, as soon as possible to be able to, you know, get it over with so that I get rid of my glasses and I'm not really dependent on this external thing to be able to see clearly. I can see pretty fine without them. I can see pretty fine without them, without the glasses. But, uh, you know, it's not really in full HD. So it's like seeing, but in like, 144p. I can see everything is happening. I can see this mic, I can see this, but once it gets really far, it gets blurry, like super blurry. So, thinking, not thinking, planning on doing that, inshallah. That's what I plan to do. Mm -mm -mm. Guys, inshallah, uh, that's what I'm planning to do. And uh, YouTube, let's actually get into like the YouTube uh, part of things where I just talk about interesting, uh, interesting, cool, funny things that I've seen. On YouTube this past week so I've been looking into new uh, abdominal workouts you know ab workouts because uh, mine just got too easy you know I'm doing app uh, you know I'm exercising every week uh, every day every week so I'm trying to uh, um, the app workout I've been doing for the past month got a bit easy got a bit easy now uh, like I'm not feeling re I'm not feeling anything the next day much less feeling sore um, so I'm trying to look for new ones you know new ab workouts that uh, will, you know, stimulate, you know, uh, soreness, stimulate hypertrophy, which is, you know, what you want if you want your muscles to grow. So one of the things that I'm trying to grow, obviously, are my abs and uh, getting stronger abs, you know, be being more fit and healthy. So uh, I'm trying, I'm looking, I've been looking uh, all week for that, for like new, uh, you know, exercise routines with regard to abs and I've I found a pretty good, a few pretty good ones, but not uh, as good as the one that I had because. But I guess that's uh, actually on me because the exercises are new to me. The exercises from the new videos that I've watched, and I can barely do them because I'm been, I've been so used to the exercises I've been doing from the video that I'm using from before. If that makes any sense. So that's what I'm actually doing right now. And uh, oh, and I actually you know did one of those vi you know picked one of those videos and. Uh, Followed the routine as much as I kind of could, you know, today, and it was pretty good. I hope I'm feeling something tomorrow. I hope it wasn't, it didn't, doesn't go to waste. There's that. So there's that. Uh, and I saw a funny edit of the, you know, the third Toy Story film. The third Toy Story film. Toy Story films, my childhood. You know, I've been raised on Disney classics like Toy Story, Lion King, uh, Pocahontas, Tarzan, you name it. Watch it all in my in my childhood. Childhood, and it was pretty awesome, man. Disney. Amazing stuff. So uh, I bought the third Toy Story film, which came out in 2010. It was, uh, I, I saw a funny, a really funny edit of, you know, um, that movie of how it kind of ends, an alternate ending. So what happens is, <laughs> yeah, I thought about it. I thought about this idea and then I uh, searched, it, searched it up on YouTube to see if it, anybody actually did that and somebody did. And the idea is to, you know that scene in the third Toy Story, spoiler alert by, uh, alert, by the way, if you haven't seen the movie love it from maybe 11 years ago, um, the toys are stuck in a furnace where they're about to, you know, a landfill furnace where they're burning, you know, the dump, burning trash. And they're about to, you know, fall into, like, slide into the uh, fire, which is the flame that's going to engulf them and basically destroy them. And... Uh, what happens in the movie, in the actual movie, is that they get saved, you know, uh, in the, like the last minute by um, the group of aliens, the group of three-eyed aliens, you know, that go, whoa, <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. So, but what happens in the video edit is that, you know, they're having this emotional moment where they're holding hands, accepting their fate, about to die. And uh, that's where in the movie, in the actual movie, they were saved, but in the video, it kind of ends there. As if that's the ending, and that's the end of the franchise, and all the t and all the toys just die, and the credits roll. <laughs> it's just a crazy. It's a funny. It's a funny idea. Very simple but funny idea. It's you know just thinking about it, it's like wow. What if that was the actual ending for the actual movie in theaters? I would have watched. 
Oh, by the way, that's the first movie I've ever watched where after the ending, people clapped. It, like for the first time I've ever seen in a movie theater back in 2010, where people actually clap by the end of the movie. So I'm thinking, what if we actually watch this alternate ending instead of what we actually saw in the movie? How will uh, how will the pe- people have reacted then? The kids, or you know, me being a kid, like 11 years old back in the day. So it's just a funny idea. I uh, I would have been interested if that it would have been interesting if that was the actual ending. So yeah, that's something funny I watched. Oh, speaking of funny things that I've watched on YouTube, I rewatched an old classic, uh, a SpongeBob clip about claustrophobia. Um, I'll get into this. Uh, yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird, you know, because this is a funny clip, not because of the clip itself. You know what happens in the clip is, is SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward fall into a well, and in that well, uh. Patrick kind of was standing too close to Squidward, and then Squidward says, Patrick, can you, like, uh, back away, please? Uh, I'm feeling claustrophobic. And then uh, Patrick is like, what does that mean? And then SpongeBob is like, I think that means he's afraid of Santa Claus. Because get it? Claustrophobic, claustrophobic, anyway. So, and then <laughs> Squidward is like, no, that's not what it means. And then Patrick is like, ho, ho, ho. And then <laughs> SpongeBob is like, stop it, you're scaring him. It's the reason it's so funny. It's because I watched it originally in the Arabic dub of the episodes. Because you know, uh, growing up, I we had SpongeBob in Arabic, which in my opinion is funnier. Uh, also, Toy Story. I didn't watch the Toy Story, Toy Story movies in English. I watched them in Arabic in my childhood. Makes them even funnier because they got down those Egyptian accents. And man, can Egyptians riff! Man, can they make jokes? So check this out. The reason it was funny, you know, the SpongeBob clip, is not because of, you know, what happened, which is, you know, Patrick, can you stop? I'm, I'm claustrophobic. What does that mean? It means he's afraid of Santa Claus. No, that's not what it means. Ho, ho, ho. Ah, okay, funny joke. But what's so funny is that in Arabic, claustrophobic, the word for it, احتجاز, خوفو من الاحتجاز, has nothing to do with Santa Claus. So, doesn't have any, you know, the word does not have anything to do with the word, you know, Santa Claus in Arabic, which is Baba Noel. So check this out. What happens in the Arabic is, you know, Squidward tells Patrick to back off because he feels claustrophobic. Innani ash'aru bil ihtijaz. He says, I feel like confined. I don't want that. And then uh, Patrick's like, ma yani hada? And it's like, what does that mean? Spongebob's like, adhanu annahu yakhafu min Baba Noel. I think he's afraid of Santa Claus. And it's like, what? What does, you know, that word, احتجاز, have to do with Baba Noel? What does, you know, claustrophobia in the Arabic, in Arabic, have to do with Santa Claus in Arabic? So, it's so weird. It was so confusing. As a kid watching, it's like, huh? What, is, what does that have to do with anything? When SpongeBob said, he, I think he's afraid of Santa Claus. In English, it makes sense. In Arabic, it doesn't make sense at all. And then it's just the most hilarious thing when I realized, it's like, that's what he meant. In English, it's claustrophobic. That's why he said he's afraid of Santa Claus. So, in Africa, I just thought it was like a random thing. But man, it's just funny considering the context. See, this is the cool thing about being bilingual. Bi- bilingual. Is it bilingual or bilingual? Whatever. That's the cool thing about it. It's like you can catch these things that are so funny that makes no sense. And it's just, you know, after you learn about it, of what's really going on, it's just the funniest thing. It's just the funniest thing. You know, it's really silly. The f- silly things that I've mentioned so far about Toy Story and Spongebob, but hey, I found them funny, and what's funny is subjective. <laughs> so, uh, getting to more, like, serious, I guess, things, more really interesting and profound and info- informative things, I've been w- re-watching some Nurman Ali Khan lect- lectures. If you guys, you know, know about him, what a cool guy, you know? I really love watching his lectures. And one, you know, specifically, I was uh, watching some of his lectures on Quran, the Quran Weekly YouTube channel. Uh, so, Nu'man Ali Khan, the way he spelled is N O U M A N. That's Nu'man, but in English, Nomen, I guess. And then Ali Khan, A L I K H A N. So, yeah, it was really just informative and eye opening. You know, even though I've heard it, you know, maybe four, five years ago, I've heard the same exact lectures. I've been re- I just rewatched them today, and uh, it was just, you know, it's like, 
huh, yeah, it's still as true as it was five years ago. I really have to apply these ideas in my life if I haven't already. These, and I highly recommend you guys check, it out, check them out. And I'd also recommend the miniseries by the same guy, Nurman Ali Khan, called That's Messed Up as well, uh, which I plan on rewatching again as well, too. It gives an Islamic perspective on different uh, matters in personal life. And it is just, you know, fantastic. It really just gives you a perspective on things. And it's it's amazing, you know, just hearing, hearing him talk and making so much sense. It's just so beautiful. And I'd be, I'd be like, dude, this is like the answers that I'm be, I've been looking for, for for a lot of questions. I highly recommend you guys check him out. Nu'man Ali Khan. N-O-U-M-A-N Ali Khan. Uh... Specifically, these uh, two things, the Quran weekly, weekly lectures and uh, the That's Messed Up miniseries that's on his channel, on his own YouTube channel, Bayina Institute. Um, I guess that is, that is B-A-Y-Y-I-N-A-H Institute. Check it out. It's really cool. Really informative. Eye-opening, guys. Really. Speaking of informative and eye-opening, I rewatched something that's not on YouTube anymore because, you know, it's on Spotify now. Joe Rogan's podcast, but not any Joe Rogan's podcast, no. Most of his podcasts, you know, kind of suck, I, I'm assuming. Because, you know, the ones that I don't like, uh, I just don't watch them. But what I rewatch that is very informative is obviously when he had Coach Faraz Zahabi as a guest. And man, I rewatched his podcast with Coach, and uh, I go back to rewatch it every uh, now and then, every once in a while. And it's a must-see, guys. Uh, Faraz is a genius, Coach Faraz is a genius, and mashallah. Uh, the the knowledge that he brings to the table is amazing. Uh, and wh- what else would you expect from a guy that's trained world champions, some of the greatest fighters of in the division's history and of all time? And wow, he went into a lengthy uh, conversation, like an hour-long conversation about, uh, you know, what truth and reality are and uh, how science relates to truth and reality. And he explains that, uh, as you can... If you want to hear it, go check it out. Uh, I'll explain very roughly here, where he kind of talks to Joe Rogan and tells him, you know, there there's a lot of woo woo, you know, woo in science, you know, and just you know a lot of things that are not really proven. It's like when you say I'm cleansing my toxins by you know using this essential oil type thing, and you know it's all that talk, you know, unproven talk that's just you know baseless. It's woo. And uh, Faraz claimed that there's a lot of woo in today's science, in today's accepted science. And Joe questioned him by saying, what do you mean? And Faraz went on to actually explain beautifully and giving many different examples about how there's a lot of, you know, woo in today's science. And uh, what he means by that very, you know, basically, the summary of it is that people tend to accept scientific facts as scientific hypotheses, rather, as fact, when, sci- when a scientific fact is nothing like a mathematical fact. These are two different things. One plus one equals two in maths. That's true. No matter how much you play with it, one plus one, you know, one and one is two. So that's a fact. But in science, it's different. It's not really a fact, it's a hypothesis. When I tell you that the reason I, you know, pick something up and drop it down, I was looking for a pen just now, uh, and it falls down, it's because of gravity. When I say that, it's not necessarily a fact. And you'll probably think, what do you mean? Of course it's gravity, that's proven, right? It's like, yes, but no. It's today's accepted hypothesis as to why the pen falls down or the thing I grabbed and dropped fell, falls down. But is it the definite true answer? We don't know. There might be new evidence that comes in that suggests, suggests otherwise. And then we have a paradigm shift causing us to think in different ways. Like how when Einstein came about, he changed a lot of what we believed was true what, uh, with regard to how gravity works when Newton was around. When Newton came, up, came around, he had basic concepts that worked perfectly fine. You know, they described the world in a very, um, very, uh, co- very, how can I say? Um, not necessarily a cohesive, but, you know, an understandable and very uh, proportional way. It made sense. What Newton explained back in his day made sense and worked just fine. Newtonian physics are perfectly fine. It, uh, not necessarily perfectly. They're fine. But the problem is he un- had a lot of, you know, 
things backwards. And that's what Einstein kind of came in and discovered that Newtonian physics were actually wrong in a lot of sense. It, or they worked, but it was wrong. Let me give you an example. So Newton said that the Earth's gravity, it's a pulling force that pulls you down to it. That's why we don't float off into the air because you know there's a force of gravity that's pulling us down to Earth. Now, is that true? Well, obviously it's accepted to everybody. You know, it's obviously something that we all think is true, but it's not necessarily true in the true in the truest sense of the word. Because, you know, one plus one is two. Like I said, that's a mathematical fact, but this is science we're talking about. This is prone to change. It's prone to different perspectives. So for can I, I can just say, like Faraz said in the podcast, that no, it's not this force of gravity that's pulling us down to earth. It's gremlins that are, that are living in the earth and they're throwing lassos, ropes at us and pulling us down. And uh, the reason the moon's gravity is uh, lower is not necessarily just because the mass is smaller, therefore less gravity. No, it's because the size is smaller and therefore less gremlins are there to pull us down. That's why the gravity is not as strong there. Now, my crazy theory, uh, for us it's crazy theory, crazy example of gremlins pulling us down to earth is obviously, you know, mythical language, but it illustrates the point that it is still, you know, a good explanation of why we're going down. Why? Because it works. Because, you know, by saying uh, you can apply it to everything, it's like the moon is smaller and that's why it has less gravity. Well, yeah, but it, I can also say the moon is smaller, it fits less gremlins. That's why we're, uh, we don't feel as heavy as we do on Earth. So, you know, as you can see, science can be explained in many different ways, but we can only, you know, figure out just so much because we're humans. We don't have the best, you know, observation. We don't have the best, you know, uh, tools for observation. Yeah. So, um, he explains it beautifully. Sorry about that. The camera cut off. So yeah, he explains it beautifully and it's pretty awesome. You know, just seeing these, um, interesting, uh, you know, philosophical topics being discussed by such a bright mind like Faraz's, Coach Faraz's, it's amazing to see. And Joe was really lost in that whole discussion, you know, because Faraz is obviously a uh, philosophy major. So he understands these concepts better than a person who hasn't gone, you know, and studied philosophy for years and years. And uh, I'm struggling with, with it a bit myself, but it's something I really like to delve into. And that's why I kind of like un have an understanding of it. Highly recommend you guys check that uh, episode out, podcast episode out. It's pretty cool. And I guess, um, I guess, you know, wow, we've been talking for a while now. Uh, well over 30 minutes now, I guess. So uh, with that said, guys, this was the Candlelight Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you come back for, by yours truly, by the way, Hamid Abdullah, got to mention my name. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you come back for more. And once again, every, wait, no, one second. Let me pull up the quote again. There is just a tremendous amount of craftsmanship in between a great idea and a great product. See you guys in the next one. Peace.